called on Jonathan Grigsby, I was sure I had picked the worst possible moment. Product company, Mr. Grigsby, just a moment, I'll ring him. Invoice 4624, 4624, 4692. Grigsby speaking. Invoice. Yeah. Yeah. What's that again? 4231. Yeah. 4228. Yeah, I'll check it. 4225. But it wasn't long before I discovered every moment in the office of Grigsby products was about the same. Full of sound and fury. I'm sorry, that's the best we can do. Well, Mr. Grigsby, I represent the Modern Office Furniture Company. My name is Dick. Grigsby speaking. Huh? Hey, jump them, jump them. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Four, six, Melody! 12. Melody! You mailed the E. Carter's son's bill to E. Carter Brothers. That's the third mistake this week. What in tarnations get into you, Melody? Uh, are you losing your grip? It won't be your fault if we keep the account. And now get on your phone and clean up this guy gone mess. Yes, Mr. Grigsby. Well, that was my introduction to Jonathan Grigsby. In between phone calls and That's jumping Jupiters, I'd barely time to say I'd been through the Grigsby factory and wanted to congratulate him on the fine job of modernization that had certainly stepped up his production. I had to. Couldn't keep up with our orders. Are you selling something, mister? Frankly, Mr. Grigsby, it occurred to us since you had the imagination four, four, to gear your seven, factory to, four, four, to modern two, engineering five, requirements. Four, four, two, three, four, four, two, one. I four, you won't four, find two, any of our folks asleep at their desks. Four, four, eight, As I said, Mr. Grigsby, four, three, it occurred to us. Excuse me, gotta get these right out. Four, two, nine, six. Even Grigsby's pens were in tune with the rest of his office. Now, where were we? Mr. Grigsby, it occurred to us that you've undoubtedly given some thought to modernizing your office to get the same efficiency as your factory. Nary a thought. Can't take on any new expense. Anyway, we'll be spreading out pretty soon. Need more people. That was my cue to ask Jonathan Grigsby for permission to make a survey of his office, to look around and determine those conditions that interfered with production. I told him we might come up with an idea or two that would increase his office efficiency. Office survey? Increase efficiency? What'll it cost? Not a cent. And no obligation. Sure? Sure. Son, my lifetime policy is to never turn down something for nothing. The place is yours. Well, thank you, Mr. Grigsby. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no obligation. So I began my survey. The question was where to start. My first stop was at Featherby's desk. No wonder Featherby's mistakes. Plenty of light, but in the wrong places. That added up to only one kind of light, glare, hard on the eyes. I'd noticed a lot of needless walking around, wasted motion usual symptom of a severe case of inefficient workflow. The file cases, fine for developing the biceps, not so fine for the nerves. The boarding house reach that speeds up fatigue, slows up production. Oh, for Pete's sake. Her desk was tough on hose, ditto production. And look here, the office straitjacket, recommended for back strain. Hmm, office jitters. Noise and confusion setting up the chain smoker's reaction. 
Not so good for the desk, either. Even the walls were in tune. So were the windows. Walls, windows, clock. Strictly from old father time. Into the afternoon, I measured and surveyed. And yet there was something else, something I was aware of, yet couldn't measure. Something that seemed to say, so many hours a day you must give to Jonathan Grigsby. So many hours a year. More time than you spend with your own family. No wonder their anxious eyes, waiting for release to the quiet and comfort of home. returning to our office to continue my survey for Jonathan Grigsby. All that day I was an eager beaver, rearranging the Grigsby office from the standpoint of most efficient workflow, calling on decorators, checking the office furniture merchandiser for data. Contractors, lighting engineers, pricing, preparing the results of my study that would translate it into a sketch to show Jonathan Grigsby what his new office would look like. And finally, one day it came in from the artist. Say, that ought to open the old boy's eyes. His eyes opened, all right, but he still wasn't giving an inch. With our scale model kit, I showed him straight line workflow, dollars and cent savings in office costs. But I was getting nowhere fast. Hmm. Seem to all look alike, uh, the furniture. Of course, Mr. Grigsby. The same as you have in your own home. Wood. Now take this newfangled color you've got for your desk, for instance. It's kind of rich looking, isn't it? Soft tone. Let me show you something, Mr. Grigsby. I demonstrated that white paper passing across a dark desk causes the pupil of the eye to contract, then expand. Watch my eye, Mr. Grigsby. Watch it closely. Great. Jump. Jupiter. Multiply the thousands of adjustments the eye must make over a dark desktop each day. Muscular fatigue. Mistakes. Then I showed him the difference using soft tone as a background with its correct reflectance factor. No contraction. Hmm. Soft tone. No, Mr. Grigsby. Soft tone. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Well, mister, uh, uh, it's been nice to see you. Think fast, brother. Mr. Grigsby, would you let me describe this modern office to you? Not today, Sean. I'm a busy man. Now, just relax a minute, Mr. Grigsby. Relax? Carnation, that's just my trouble. I don't have time to relax. I was desperate. All I needed was a moment. About the time it took him to say, Great Jumping Jupiter, to prove that modern wood furniture could cut down his office costs and speed up his work. Okay, shoot. But I warn you, you're wasting your time. Now lean back, Mr. Grigsby. Huh? Lean back. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Concentrate on this sketch. Try to imagine it's here. And let me describe this modern office to you. In your modern wood furniture office, Mr. Grigsby, you have not only beauty and prestige, but a high degree of efficiency. Hey, what's happened? It's so quiet. Noise-absorbing wood furniture helps, Mr. Grigsby. Glory be. Look at those desks and chairs. Wood, Mr. Grigsby, the same as you'd want in your office. The natural material the office worker prefers for its warmth, for its friendliness. Hey, I'm glassed in. Privacy, Mr. Grigsby. Go on, take a look around. Notice that your new layout and more compact desks have provided enough space for a reception room and an extra desk. Notice your new lighting fixtures, proper lighting for efficiency. And your ceiling, soundproof to prevent office nerves. Not bad. Hey, what's this? 
Oh, I, I see. You've got my office separated from the reception room. Less work interruption, Mr. Grigsby. And note the seating arrangement of your people. Backs to the door. Yep, you spotted it. Soft tone finish with its eye saving benefits. Hey, hey, look at that. He's burning my desk. Oh, no, Mr. Grigsby. You see, these modern wood desks come equipped with burn proof tops. Great jumping Jupiter. Not bad, not bad. Hey, look there. Modern wood posture chairs are adjustable, Mr. Grigsby. Independent back action. Lean back, lean forward. And that's only one of four separate adjustments for working comfort. Well, I'll be... Hey, hey, she, she didn't sit there before. Now remember, your office layout's been rearranged, Mr. Grigsby. Speed up workflow, you know. And file cases that don't call for bulging biceps either. No strain on the muscles, no strain on the nerves. <laughs> Slick as a whistle. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, look at Featherby. He he looks uh, happy. Why not? Proper light, the right kind of desk and chair, Mr. Grigsby. Eliminate various fatigue factors, and what have you got? More production. Check. Proper lighting helps cut down the office mistake frequency, Mr. Grigsby. See for yourself. Check. Now, notice the walls, Mr. Grigsby. The psychology of color. Soothing for the nerves. Easy on the eyes. Mm, easy on the eyes. But doesn't she look too comfortable? Her desk and chair are individually adjusted for size. No more wasted motion and energy. Hardened desk legs that can't splinter and tear holes. Hey, wait a minute. That's all too easy. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Today's wood desk drawers are chemically treated so they can't swell and become stuck. Hmm, Miss Piper. Say, she, she's quieted down a lot, too. Yep, yep, she's got the same kind of desk and chair. And notice, Mr. Grigsby, now your stenographers are close to their base of operations, close to the office manager. Mighty fine, mighty fine. You know something? Uh, Jupiter looks like people like to work for Grigsby Products Company. Get over that darn thing. Hmm. Customer. Doesn't seem to mind waiting. Check and double check. Yep, everything sure looks fine. In fact, this place looks almost as good as a place to spend the day in his own home. Fine wood furniture and, hey, Venetian blinds. Got the same thing at home. And the pens. Mm, and the telephone. Mighty fine. Mighty fine. Mm. And the drawers. Well, no combinations necessary. You pull, they open. Right you are. And no squeaks in my chair either. You know what I like most? My people. Somehow they look different. I mean, well, now they look uh, satisfied. Oh, nation, Miss Piper, can't a fella even think? The spell was broken. Jonathan Grigsby was himself again. It's no use. Like I told you before, we'll soon be taking on more space. We need a couple of more people. I was all set for that comeback. With my survey showing that with modernization and with the new office layout designed to speed up workflow, considerably more work could be done in the same space with the same number of people. And that savings alone in one year would amount to practically the cost of modernization. And I had the figures to prove it. As I talked, I noticed Jonathan Grigsby's face. Fight against it as he may, he was beginning to show interest. And then... Grigsby speaking. Oh, oh, yes, yes, Mr. Kramer, yes. Uh, yeah, we've been trying to track down that order for the past week. There. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll get right on it. Yes, I, I realize that, Mr. Kramer. Yeah. I'll call you right back. Featherbeck! Where in tarnation is that Kramer order? Get off the dime, Featherby. Turn the dice on off his upside down, but find it. And I mean now. But, Mr. Grigsby, I think it's on your desk. On my desk? 
Uh, Mr. Grigsby. Not now, sir. Not now, sir. Can't you see I'm busy? Here was my chance to prove that lack of efficiency was costing the money. Our nation is at order. <laughs> office had been modernized, I got an urgent phone call from Jonathan Grigsby to hurry on over. I got there at closing time. In the inner office, I found a business associate of Jonathan Grigsby's who had a large office of his own uptown. I wondered what was behind Grigsby's call. From his sly look, I knew he had something up his sleeve, but he bided his time. Got a nice looking office here, Mr. Grigsby. Yeah, took a lot of imagination to do this, J.G. Nation. I've been meaning to do it for a long time. Why, it's as simple to me as ABC. You can't run a profitable business without an efficient office. Come on outside, Walt. Let me show you around. But you've already shown me around two or three times, J.G. Well, we're hard-headed businessmen, Walt. When we spend money on improvements, we've got to balance the debits against the credits. See how we come out in the end, right? Right. Now, on the credit side, what have I gained? saving space that gave me a pretty nice reception. That's right. And room for an extra desk. And what desk? Soft tone. Easy on the eye. Beautiful. Everything is planned. Efficient workflow. You know. Better work atmosphere. My folks love these wood desks and chairs. Warm. Friendly. Uh, here, Walt. Try it. Mighty comfortable. You think it's comfortable? Wait till I adjust it. Now, Walt, this chair has not one adjustment, not two, but four separate adjustments. Seat up, back up, tilt forward and back, and back tension. Now, on the debit side, all this has cost me something. Hard dollars and cents. It's only been a couple of months, but already I see daylight ahead. In space I've saved in higher production, in better morale. Not only that, Walt, in a year or two, I will have saved enough to pay for the whole thing. Now, look, Walt, you've got a big force operating up there under horse and buggy methods. Now, listen, you old stick in the mud. It's time you modernize. Now, wait a minute, J.G. Ah, that's just it, Walt. You can't afford to wait. Walt's the tightest fisted penny pincher in town. He's got no imagination. I've been working on him for a month. But, J.G., you know I'm sold. It's just that, that I... Got a contract on you, son? But, Mr. Grigsby, I don't know what he needs. I'd have to make a survey. No obligation. Uh, that's right, Walt. No obligation. Sure? Sure. Sure. Well, that's the way it was. From the day I paid my first call on Jonathan Grigsby to the final moment when suddenly it dawned on me that wonder of wonders. 
I'd taken a junior partner into my business. Because, you see, Jonathan Grigsby was now working for me. He'd not only been converted to wood office furniture, but he didn't mind shouting it out to the business world. Hmm. Pretty slick, I'd say. Almost magic. There's nothing magic about it. No? A lot of tough spade work paved the way to that first call. You see, one morning I saw in the paper, Grigsby had modernized his factory. Well, why not his office, I thought. I went out there two or three times, studied the entire layout. Folks must have thought I acted pretty strange. But I got my facts. And then, armed with all the ammunition I could find, I tackled Grigsby. He sure was a tough baby to sell. No, just a good businessman. With no more than the average businessman's interest in working conditions in his office. But once he could be convinced that the welfare of his employees went hand in hand with the welfare of his business, he began to see things differently. I guess your survey did that. It was pretty complete. Say, remember that argument he put up? He was going to take on more space, add a few people? We not only saved him the expense of that space, but the salaries of those two people. And get this, the salaries he won't have to pay in one year alone will pay for the cost of modernizing his office. Where'd you get your facts? In your office furniture merchandiser. And you'll find plenty of other facts for other situations you'll come up against. Yes, I've crammed up on them pretty much. Well, a bit shaky, aren't you? Uh, my first call, you know. Well, wish me luck. Think you like selling wood office furniture? Oh, I guess it's like anything else. If you've got a good product and an act to sell... Mm-hmm. It's a little more than that. Take myself. You know, I get a real kick out of doing this. But, uh... I find it a little hard to explain. See this? The grain of wood. The handiwork of Mother Nature. Beautiful, isn't it? Maybe I'm hepped on the subject, but sometimes I close my eyes and think of wood and how it's figured in the history of man. Now, you might almost say his progress has been carved in the fine grain of wood. It's provided him with warmth and comfort through the ages. Built his homes. When he set out to explore his world, built his ships. When he settled, built his cities. It's given him protection from his enemies, from the elements. Because, you see, there's something in the beauty and character of wood. Call it friendliness, warmth. Well, I guess it's only natural that he should want it around him now, in his office as well as in his home. I see. But say, how'd you get Grigsby sold on wood? Your office furniture merchandiser's got 50 good reasons why the smart businessman prefers wood. Jonathan Grigsby's a smart businessman. You like selling wood desks and chairs, not only for the bang out of making a sale, for the profit, either. Of course, that helps. But for the warm friends you'll make in the business community. Not only because of the sale, but in servicing them and follow-up calls. And someday, you'll have someone out there like Jonathan Grigsby. Someone who won't so much as buy a ream of stationery without first consulting you. Someone waving your banner, plugging hard for you. Yep. It all ends up in quite a nice cycle. Profit for all concerned. For you, or the businessman, and profit for his employees in better working conditions. Hmm. Maybe I'm beginning to understand now. Want to practice on me? <laughs> well, sure. Uh, wood office uh, uh, desks and chairs are uh, more serviceable, quieter, um, less noise when you use them, and, and they absorb other sounds, too. Um, Wood office furniture doesn't transmit heat and cold. More comfortable winter and summer. And it's good for employee morale, too. Hey, that's it. I've got it. <laughs> well, here I go. Thank you.